Do you remember a few tutorials back we went over this uh, graphic representation of where our, our object is going to live? We've got our source destinations and uh, source variables and our destination variables and here's our object. Well, if you've print screened this and printed it out, keep it to hand because all of these variables, we're going to place them in our object. So if we go back to our sprite arrow object, and this is how it looked the last time we saw it, at the top, we're going to place all of these variables. And if you refer back to that graphic at the same time as I'm explaining it, well, I'm going to have to import a few of these classes. There we go. So at the very top, we've got some object important variables, and that's uh, local clock and counting. So we've got the uh, local clock double, an integer for the frame count, sprite frame count, and an integer for speeding up our frame speed of our sprite frame. We'll start with our source variables. Our source variable is our sprite sheet. Sprite sheet height and width, the source rectangle that we're copying from, and the coordinates of the source rectangle, and the number of sprite frames. They're all there on this graphic. And the same for the destination variables, this block right here. Canvas width and height, the destination, the destination rectangle we're going to be copying to, the destination width and height of our sprite frame, the x and y positions, our speed, and our direction data. We're going to make our constructor a little bit more detailed. At the moment, we're only passing in the context, but we want to control things like speed, direction, uh, the speed of our object, the speed of its frame animation, its size. So we're going to add these new arguments, what do they do? Well, it's useful to define what they do. So as you're implementing, you can stick to that definition. And here's what these, here's what these arguments are gonna be. Motion, we're going to accept a one or a zero, and depending on which one, it's either gonna be diagonal motion, as you saw, they were flying in diagonal motions and some of our objects were following the border. We've also got the integer sprite speed, which is uh, density pixels per second. So that's the speed of the object. We've also got this uh, sprite frame speed up, and that's just a multiplier of the frame rate of our sprite frame animation. And the last argument, size, will control the size of our destination frame. And I don't want too many arguments, so I'm gonna use this one cleverly. If we give it a negative value, we're gonna implement that value as a multiplication of the source size. So if it's minus two, we're gonna multiply the source sizes by two. If it's minus three, we're gonna multiply the source size, frame size by three. If our size is greater than zero, we're gonna assume we want to define our destination frame sizes in terms of density pixel values. When you bring an object into existence, it's gonna ask a few questions. It's gonna ask, uh, who am I? Where am I? What am I? And we can tell this object in the constructor exact, exactly who and what it is. It's just a way I like to think about it. So if we stay in the constructor for the moment, I can paste this pre-type content. Oh, all classes to import. At the very top, who am I? How do I behave? That's your sprite frame speed up. How fast is it, is it being animated? Sprite frame count, local clock. Uh, what am I? Your appearance. So that's your sprite sheet. And we've done this in previous tutorials. So we can assign the sprite sheet by getting the bitmap factory, decoding a resource, using the context that's already passed in to get the resources and reference our arrow sheet image. And well, how big am I? Height and width. How many frames do I have? And uh, number of sprite frames is four. So we, we know that we've designed our sheet to have eight rows and four columns. So we can also calculate these values, our sprite frame source height and widths. So now we've got a, a representation of what our object looks like. But uh, where am I? Where is the object? It's going to be inside our canvas. We need our canvas width. We've This is stuff that we've done in previous tutorials. So we're getting the real benefits of all of the other tutorials you've watched before. We've got our canvas width, canvas height, and we're telling our object that when it's first created, it's X and Y positions on the destination are at the origin zero, zero. It's speed, well, we're taking in the sprite speed and we're converting it to pixels and assigning that to our destination speed. And how is our object moving wherever it is? Here are our constructor arguments, motion. And if it's set to one, we're gonna set our destination X direction and Y directions both to one. Motion is zero. We're gonna start it along the top border. So it's gonna move in the X direction by one and nothing in the Y direction. So that's diagonal taken care of by motion one and border motion uh, taken care of by motion zero. And here's how we're handling how big our object is, whatever it is. So if the size is less than zero, we're taking that size, it's negative, so we're gonna multiply it by a minus one 
and multiply the source width to get our destination width and the same for the height. If our inputted size is greater than zero, we're going to assume it's a density pixel value. We're going to use our local methods to convert from density pixels to the pixel value for whichever device this object is on and store that as our destination width and our destination height values. We've described these extra arguments we've put in our constructor, but because we've done this, we need to go back into our layout activity sprite sheet 001 layout. And in the constructor where we define or bring into existence our sprite arrow object. We only pass in a context, but we need to pass in other values. I'm just going to cut and paste what these values were. So we've got the context, and this is the sprite that we're going to be animating. We're going to start off easy. We're going to set the motion to diagonal, so we're going to put a 1 in here. We're going to set the sprite speed to 30 density pixels a second. We're going to keep the frame rate of the actual sprite animation to 1 and we're going to keep the size of our destination frame equal to the source frame. And we'll be animating this sprite over the next few tutorials, now that everything's set up. And that's where I'd like to leave it at this tutorial. We have an object, it has the variables to describe where it is, how fast it's going, and in the next tutorial we'll start to implement some sprite sheet animations. Thanks for watching.